Ladies and gentlemen, the bushes. <laughs> Push squared. <laughs> Look at this room. I, I've said this before, and I'm going to say it again. We hear from Dr. Fauci all the time to trust the science, right? Trust the science. I'm a scientist. Two studies came out a little while ago, and they're scientific in medical journals, and they said conservatives are better looking. <laughs> so I'm going to trust that science, and that's a fact. So ladies and gentlemen, the Bushes, as I said. Everybody. <laughs> And we have three attorneys on stage, but they're much more accomplished than I. <laughs> and That's a scary thought. No, no, it's a factual thought. And they're here from Austin, and we're grateful that you could be here today. Thank you so much. Good to be with you. Yes. So I want to start with Amanda. You're a working mother and an attorney and a conservative, thank goodness. <laughs> yeah. And what message do you have for young conservatives? What do you think are the biggest issues facing the young women today? Well, I would say just to, you know, work hard. That's one of the things that I grew up doing from a small town in West Texas and, you know, persevere. Um, it's difficult and it's a balancing act always to be a working woman um, and a mother and a conservative. Um, and the, but those things should not be mutually exclusive. Um, and it, you know, it takes a village, but there are days where I feel like I'm nailing it in one area and I'm not doing so great maybe in another area, but it all balances out and um, just, just work hard and you know, pursue, pursue what you want to do and people will be there to support you. That's a very valid point. And as young women today, we see that there's really a culture war going on and the leftists are trying to hurt our value systems and our womanhood. What other issues do you see that young people are facing sort of as attacks from the left? Well, I think, you know, your faith and your family are always, you know, for me at least, um, you know, number one and number two. And I feel like everything else falls into place. Um, and it's difficult when you're getting criticized by the left for those things. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, I think if you believe in, you know, family faith um, and what's important to you and stand strong, which can be difficult as a young woman, right, when you're getting criticized, you know, from the left or from anyone. Um, but, you know, find a good support system, find a good mentor, um, and explore the areas that you're passionate about and just, you know, doing what you're doing today, right? Coming here and finding mentors, meeting other people, um, finding people that you resonate with and, and sharing stories. And you spoke of passion. Person, as we all know, you can't go to law school and survive that in the bar exam without having that passion. And I know it's hard to find when you're young, finding that path and finding that spirit for what you believe in is hard. What is, is the advice you would give about finding your path and finding your voice and finding that career that really makes you feel fulfilled? Yeah, I think that's super important. And sometimes that changes. I mean, when I went to law school, I thought I was gonna do one thing and ended up doing another. Um, part of finding your passion is exploring different things and figuring out maybe what you don't enjoy doing, right? I mean, just as much as figuring out what you're passionate about is also figuring out what you're not passionate about. Um, so just, you know, be creative and, and go out and do a lot of things and, and, you know, meet people and use other people's experiences um, and experience, you know, and see what, see what you're passionate about. But passion is super important. It, it really is. And you're a working mom and a wife. And, you know, a lot of the women here might not have children yet, but kids are probably on the horizon. What is your advice for balancing it all? It's hard. <laughs> it is not easy. Um, marry someone who is a true partner yes. because, yeah. um, and you know, we talked, we were talking backstage about, you know, just really having a true partnership because it's, it's impossible to do it alone. You know, um, George is super engaged, you know, he comes home and he drops the phone, drops the work, um, and gets on the floor and plays with the kids and gives me a break. Um, like I said, there are days where I feel like I'm nailing it as a mom and I don't do as well at work or vice versa. And, you know, you're probably not going to be a 10 out of 10 on both of those things every single day. And so I think I've, over the years, learned to lower my expectations of trying to be 10 out of 10 in every area. Um, you know, but if I can be an 8 out of 10 most days, then I feel like I'm succeeding. <laughs> <laughs> that makes you a 10. That's right. So these questions aren't on my list, but I decided I'm going to ask you two. Well, maybe just one. So you married into the Bush family, which is, people might have heard of the Bushes, not the baked beans, <laughs> not those ones, not the beer, not the baked beans, the like presidential four generations of politics. 
Tell us one little inside nugget of gossip about the Bush family. <laughs> Let's see. Just a little nugget. An insider like nugget. Like something from Thanksgiving, anything. Um, Secret, right? We want some dirt. Let's see. Uh, Okay, I'll tell you a wedding. I'll tell you a wedding story. When George and I got married, again, I was from a small town in West Texas, a little overwhelmed with you know getting married in Kennebunkport, Maine, um, planning the wedding, and you know you have your guest list and you invite 200 people, and you know they say online 60% will come. You know, so invite 200, expect 140, and so I'm telling this to Barbara Bush, um, who I was extremely close with, um, and she, yeah, and. Um, and she said, she said, now Mandy, the church holds 200, so how many are you inviting? And I said, well, I'm gonna probably invite about 250, and I, you know, I think we'll be at like 150, and she looked at me and she said, Mandy dear, you, you realize that if you invite them, they will come. And she, and she was so great, and, but I'll never forget, and I kid you not, I think we invited 208 and 203 came. <laughs> And so we actually had to add three additional chairs in the church. But so well, these are good problems to have. Good problems good to have. Story. So I'm going to move on to your lovely husband Please. here. Uh -huh. do, do you go by commissioner? Is that your title? George P. Y'all can <laughs> George call P. me George P. That's like a good nickname, George P. Absolutely. Well, it's longer than, you know, but it's a good one. But you are the commissioner of the Texas General Land Office. So that sounds like a big title. Tell us what that means in theory. Well, first of or all, practice. I, I want to thank you all for coming out, and I want to thank Charlie Kirk for his incredible leadership. What a great <laughs> patriot he is. Uh, as land commissioner, I think it's the most important agency that Texans probably haven't uh, learned a thing about. Uh, but we serve as the chief asset manager for the people of Texas, where we generate billions of dollars for public high school students here in Texas. How many Texas high school students do we have here today? Oh, wow. There you go. All right. How many from Florida here today? Ooh, nice. How many from California? All right, we won't hold that against you, but welcome to Texas. Uh, we also take care of military veterans here in the state of Texas. I'm a, I'm a vet myself, served in Afghanistan. Uh, and, and I know very well that military spouses run the home front while we're gone, and this one ran it well. <laughs> uh, we respond to natural disasters, we take care of our state's rich history, and uh, I was proud to support Donald Trump in 2016, and also, and also 2020. And so, so I love my job, I love Texas, and I love being here. So again, I have a question that wasn't on my list. So 2024 is a year in the future. I mean, not next year, but it's coming up in a couple of years. So um, if someone said VP pick, <laughs> <laughs> what would you say? Boss. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I love my role. Uh, I am announcing for attorney general for the great state of Texas. Um, um, I think we need to have a, a lead prosecutor that's going to confront human trafficking here in our state. Yes. This is, this is, this is the fastest growing crime in the state of Texas. And young women in Texas are not for sale. We need a lead prosecutor, just like I did during the legislative session, I will work with human trafficking survivors and I will shut down sexually oriented businesses and the known hubs of this trade. And as the lead prosecutor to the Johns, the Pimps, and the Perps, know this, that your days of sanctuary are almost over. I'm coming after you. So, we'll, we'll leave VP for the highfalutin people, but we need a chief prosecutor here in Texas. Wow, well, that, the question about that uh, trafficking is so important, and I'm glad you brought that up because that leads to the border. And those issues are obviously tied together. You are a Texan, you understand Texas, you are an attorney. Please explain to us how this is tied to the border, what's going on at the border, and what you can do to change it. So the Biden-Harris agenda has completely failed the American people, and it's failed the state of Texas on the southern border. After I announced last week, my first trip was to the border. 
and I visited with Brandon Judd and the National Border Patrol Council. Brandon Judd was the advisor to President Trump on all things related to border security. And he says that we've only built 150 of the 700 miles that were appropriated for the Trump wall. We've got to finish the Trump wall. Yeah. So, so Governor Abbott announced yesterday that he will finish that wall and that under state law, And if the, feds, if the feds are not going to enforce federal immigration law, then the state of Texas will enforce state trespassing law. And as Attorney General, I would prosecute those cases gladly. Second, we need to go back to the Remain in Mexico policy. This is a loophole, this is a loophole in our asylum laws, where if you come to our country and if you are from a Northern Triangle country, you say, I am here to seek asylum. You're processed through. You're given a court appearance. Maybe you show up, maybe you don't, in three years. And we know that that is what's leading to this large surge of illegal immigration, the largest surge in modern American history. Uh, so as the chief prosecutor, I, I'm working on cases at the land office where we will not only finish that wall, but we're going to bring a case against the federal government to make them do their job. Uh, but this does tie into human trafficking, it ties into drug trafficking. The cartels are making three times more trafficking young women and children than they are trafficking narcotics. And they're using those same uh, trafficking corridors to do this business. And that's why I was proud to receive this endorsement from the National Border Patrol Council last week, because they know that I'm serious about our national security. So, wow, I, I think what you're saying is, is that building the wall is important and valuable and helpful and safe for our country. Walls work. <laughs> Walls work. Yeah. Uh, every trip that I go, I've been to Del Rio, I've been to Laredo, El Paso, McAllen, Roma, you name it. And I will find Trump wall on the ground, unfinished because of the Biden administration's inability to do their job. Uh, so my case that I'll be bringing in a few weeks will hold deadbeat bureaucrats and D.C. politicians accountable because these were duly appropriated dollars that Congress sent for the Trump wall. Time for you to do your job. And you, you talked about D.C. politicians. There's some good ones that are in your family. <laughs> you are fourth generation politics. Is it inherited? Is it in your blood? Is it just that you're a brilliant guy? I know the answer to that last one, and it's yes. <laughs> what made you want to be involved in politics? Well, as a military veteran, when I came back from my service in 2011, um, I, it changed me. Uh, I looked at my fellow military veterans here in Texas. I saw a high rate of suicide. I saw a high rate of unemployment, and I felt like I needed to be a part of the solution for our veterans community. And knowing that the land office deals with veterans' issues and serves our fellow vets, I knew that I needed to enter that challenge. Um, I've obviously been raised in a family that's taught me more importantly than anything else. It's not about running for a job. And my message to you is very simple, is to serve causes greater than self. Get in the fight. Be involved in your community. Be strong. Stand in there and be firm. You don't necessarily have to run for office, though. We need uh, future leaders. And in fact, I think the first female president is going to be from this organization. Oh, yeah. It's not going yeah. to be Kamala Harris. I hope not. <laughs> it's not going to be Kamala Harris. She hasn't been to Europe. <laughs> or, the, or the border. It's only yeah, been 89 days since uh, she's been placed as borders are, but we're waiting for her in Texas. Yeah. yeah. She's very busy cackling. <laughs> <laughs> so we have people that aren't cackling or going to Europe because they're here. <laughs> what message do you have for these young women about their future, whether it's in politics or not? Well, this is a, a great platform, and uh, y'all are meeting some of the, the country's finest leaders and patriots. Uh, hand out your card. Get involved. Get involved in a campaign. Um, I know that there's going to be a lot of them here in Texas, but throughout the nation. I'd love to help you out. Um, you know, it's never too early to get started. The stakes could not be larger. You know, when I uh, first got started in politics, it was hard to believe that socialism would confront us, and polling data shows that Two of three young Americans are open to the idea of socialism, and one in five are open to communism. Wow. And that's, 
that's just unacceptable. And, and as a father of an eight and a six-year-old, I think about the future of this great country. I think about your future children and your future grandchildren and what kind of country we're going to leave. And I see people from all over the world trying to come to this country illegally and legally, but for one reason, because we are the greatest country. But it's under assault. It's under assault. It's under assault from a socialist Marxist ideology that's not just part of just a few Democrats in Washington, D.C. or in a few state capitals. It's actually the mainstream part of their party. And Joe Biden campaigned, well, actually, he was in the closet, I think, the most basement, of the time. Basement, basement. The basement, basement. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, Eat ice cream. <laughs> yeah. It's chocolate, uh, chocolate chip. But, <laughs> <laughs> but he has led completely contrary to that. And he has allowed AOC and the progressives to run the agenda. And so that's why you all need to get involved, because in shorter, we've seen it in Texas with the defund the police movement in Austin, where they've defunded in a liberal progressive city council overnight over $100 million, the honorable men and women that wear the blue uniform every single day, separating us from the chaos and the anarchy in our streets. So whether you're in Texas, California, Florida, any state of this great country, you gotta get involved. So true, and, and when you talk about getting involved, what young people need to realize, and please piggyback on this, is that city council and school board run. If you, don't, if you can say, oh, I don't have kids yet, it doesn't matter. That doesn't mean you have to have kids to have a seat at the table because we need conservatives out like, uh, like you out there advocating for our future families and our families and our children and our neighborhood. So run for office, wouldn't you say? What, what would you guys say Absolutely. is the best advice for that? Absolutely. You know, 2020 was the uh, year of the Republican women. We have more... More female Republicans in the Congress than ever before, and Mandy was a part of that effort. Uh, we're doing a good job here in Texas, but we need you to run for office. Don't be afraid. Put your name on that ballot. Get out there and work hard. You'll do it. You'll do it. And I'll be there with you. Well, I'm going to give it up for the Bushes and for the Republican women and to yeah. our 2022 Texas AG. <laughs> Thank you guys so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you all for having us. Thank you. Thank you, guys. That was amazing. Thank you. That was so fun. Oh, my gosh. I live in Florida. Maybe.